Snowflake Obsidian. It's been running in polish since uh, the 19th, so it's been in for a week. Today's the 23rd of November, a couple of days till Thanksgiving. Now we don't want to make a mess opening this barrel because we may be reusing it. Oof, very foamy for our polish. Very, very foamy. So we have some water here. Let's dig around and find a stone. Let's see what we've got here. Let's try it off. And let's see how the polish is. Oh, we are getting a little a little bruising on that edge. But it's getting a polish. You can see the reflection. Now that's a dried off stone. So it's got a nice lovely polish. Let's check another. what makes this polish so foamy. Okay, let's dry it off. Get nice and dry. Okay. It's not as black as I thought it would be. It's got a really nice polish. Let's see how that flashes. Really nice polish. Oh, a little bit of a scrape there. Let's try and get a bigger piece. I wonder if this is going to have to run a little bit longer. Okay. And see the shine. I'm very surprised how it's not um, having that really high glossy black. I mean, the shine's really nice, but it's like all silvery. Huh. Wonder after a burnish if it would blacken again. Burnishing is when you take the polished stone and you run it through a wash cycle with borax and uh, it gets rid of all the rest of the remaining polish and, and anything else, you know, and it, it, you run it, I don't know, 24, 48 hours, and then they come out just spectacular. But before we put them in there, I don't know what's going on. Hmm. Get some clean water here and see what the deal is with this stone. Now see, wet, it looks so much darker when we dry it. Let's see if it's just this polish. No. I think it needs to stay in polish another week. There's something going on here. 
but I want to check all the stones and I want to make sure there's not a crack or a chip somewhere that might be causing these issues. So I'm going to pull the stones out, put them in the water, go wash them oh, outside so I don't ruin my plumbing. But if they're going to come back in here, I don't want to lose all this great slurry. I just want to make sure there's nothing broken. I'm really surprised how these corners are turning out. We've got ceramic media in here as well. Kumbaba Jasper did not have this issue. And I was reading that these obsidians need a little bit extra care. So what I might end up doing is running these through a different type of polish. Oh, I lost one. Come little fella. I'm getting totally sidetracked. Oh, this feels so smooth and soft. Okay, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go uh, rinse these off outside and uh, be right back. All right, we have cleaned the snowflake obsidian. Uh, with a toothbrush, scrubbed it really good and clean. These are completely dry, and they are—they have, as you can see, some pe some spots that have no polish. Some that are starting to polish up very nice. So these are by no means ready. Now, as I was saying about um, polishing obsidian, it has some tricks that you need to do. And I was just treating it like any other stone. And, ooh, it's a little tiny pebble. Look at how nice that one came out. Um, sometimes you, you could use a cerium oxide. Some people said tin oxide, and I would not put this in a tin oxide. Um, and then there's another way of polishing these and it's called a dry polish and the dry polish is to use corn cob and uh, as instead of water and use uh, put your aluminum oxide polish in that so I think that's what I'm going to try but I'm going to have to order some because I don't have any here um, so these are going to get put aside and we're going to wait for that and we're going to experiment and see how the dry polish works with these. And the good news is with dry polish I don't have to wash barrels outside. <laughs> but um, yeah, these, these are not, my goodness, we have very bad lighting here today. Um, these are not polishing evenly. But we, we do have a really nice shine, but it's not everywhere. See, like that whole corner is very dull because it hasn't completed. So these are by no means finished. I do not want to put them back in the aluminum oxide polish um, again by itself. I would like to uh, try it with the uh, dry polish and see what that does because there's, I mean these are completely dry and they're looking really gray and silvery instead of that nice sharp black and white. So as you can see, just not happy with the results so far. And they're almost looking... There's no chips. But it almost looks like there was a chip in the barrel that just scratched all the surfaces. But the surface itself really is not scratched. 
you can see, it's very smooth. It's just parts of it is not polished yet. Hmm. Okay, so this will continue to be an experiment. We're going to clean this barrel out and we're going to hold it for the dry polish and we'll check in and uh, hopefully we'll get the polish this week and see what happens. This might be a couple of weeks before we see the Snowflake Obsidian again due to waiting on Prana product to get shipped in. Okay, let's move on to our barrels that are in the 500s grit stage. Be right back. To Crystal Wellness Studios rock tumbling series. Today uh, we're doing a short little video um, on how to dry polish softer stones. Now what we have today is we have our snowflake obsidian that we tried to polish in regular aluminum oxide uh, polish and this was in for a week and we were not happy with the results. And that was the regular wet method. So now what we're going to try to do is to take these stones, which still feel amazing, so they're, they're not damaged other than this frosting look. Um, we're going to put them in our one and a half pound barrel with corn cob. Yes, corn cob. And the polish. So there will be no water at all, hence the dry polish method. So the first thing that you want to do is once you have your stones um, that have gone at least, I would say, through the pre-polish stage, and at Crystal Weld Studios we use uh, two pre-polishing stages, the 500 grit and then the 1000, both aluminum oxide pre-polishes. So once it's gone through that, it's ready for the polish stage. and. All this cute little corn cob here. We're going to pour some in the barrel. Now I want to layer these stones in here. And I also want to do it with the polish. So what I read is per pound of, of corn cob, you should use one level tablespoon of polish. However, I'm not measuring it. I just, I'm going to put one and a half tablespoons in this tiny little barrel and I'm going to stir it up so that it gets all nice and mixed up. Add some more corn cob, stir it a little bit more. And make sure everything is dry. Make sure the barrel is completely dry. Your stones are completely dry. You don't want anything wet at all. So now I'm going to take some of these little lovelies and bury them. I'm going to add some more corn cob. And shake it up with the rest of it. I want to get that polish residue or the polish medium mixed in. Can add a few more. Now, when you wet polish, you only want your barrel two thirds of the way full. With dry polish, you can fill it on. Um, pretty much all the way. I'm shaking it here because I want to get the dry pot. I want to get the uh, polish in here as well. So you can see 
little pieces of the polish are moving forward. Completely cover. Now you can see the lip over in here. Not quite to it, but it's full. Everything's covered. We're gonna put our lid on our barrel. You don't have to worry about leaking because there's no water. So now I'm gonna label the container, what's in it. And this is, and I'm gonna let it run for about four days, five days, and then I'm gonna check it. And then after, um, I will, af after we check it, or I'll film it when we check it, so you can kind of see the progress, and we'll make up our mind how much longer it has to run in the dry polish. All right, we'll see you in a few days. All right, here's our experiment. We have our dry polish on our snowflake obsidian. It's been in there for one week. Now, as we recall, our um, we did the Snowflake Obsidian one week in the wet polish and it looked pretty hazy. We weren't really happy with it. Um, so let's, let's see what this does. Let's see if this fixed that haze. Oh, I still have that wet polish on my hand. Hang on. There. Okay. <sighs> So let's pull this out, dry it off. Well, <laughs> it's already dry, but let's get some of the polish off of it. Well, it feels really great. I'm going to do a close up. Well, it feels super good. has a really great shine. I am so completely bummed about how hazy this looks. Not pleased at all. It might have to go back into uh, 1000 to get rid of this haze. Maybe even 500. Gosh, I don't like that at all. This one is slightly damp. Nope, not liking it. So, supposedly, it could take a couple of weeks. Now, since we're experimenting, this is what we do. I'm going to take this lovely piece. Snowflake Obsidian that should, you know what, I wonder what it would look like wet. Hang on, let me grab my squirt bottle. Looks better wet because it gets that dark look. But it is, it's, it's pretty hazy. I think we're going to have to scratch this corn cob. Uh, step and go back to like a 500 grit to kind of refine the surface. But I'm going to give it, I'm going to be patient and I'm going to give it the two weeks. It's not just that one, they're all looking like that. Whoop, wrong way. They're, they're all looking like that. Yep. Not pleased at all. I 
one more week and if it's not improving in one week I'm going to take it I'm gonna bust it all the way back to 500 and uh, cleaning the rim here and we're gonna see if we can refine that surface which was a step I probably should have done before I started this okay put it back on let it, whoop. Look at that. that corn cob dust. I'm gonna let it run a second week. If we see no improvement, then uh, yeah, we're gonna bust it back. But again, we are experimenting, so we need to figure out what the devil's going on. And we're back with our snowflake obsidian. It has been um, one day in our repair barrel of 120 to 20 medium grit. What remember we had this all the way in polish and when we took it out to look at it it had a lot of crazing or frosting to it where it had had a lot of damage. And now this is really smooth and a lot of the damage is going away. It's still, you know, when dry, not that super luscious look that we wanted. So we're going to give it a wash cycle and we're going to send it on, um, I think directly to 1000 grit. I don't think it really needs to go through 500. Um, we're going to skip that stage because again these stones have already been in polish and we didn't like it and now we're going to repair it. So we're going to skip the 500 uh, pre-polish stage and we're going to put it on our uh, 1000 super fine polish because I mean these are just getting so tiny. These are really tiny but they are super smooth. So a couple of wash cycles and into uh, pre-polish. Okay, well, they look a whole lot better than they did last week. So that's a good thing. Okay, we'll be back with our next barrel. And we're back with our Snowflake Obsidian Repair Barrel. It's been running in 1000 super fine pre-polish for a week and again like the calcite we were not happy with the finished product and we had taken it back to a 120, 220 uh, but unlike the calcite we did put this in a 500 before we put it in the 1000. And as you can see, this is a dry piece here, a lot of the crazing that had been on it before is now is now gone. Let's see how is that. I'm getting a good angle on that. One of the crazing appears to be gone. So you can see how nice and sharp that black is. Nice vibrant black where before it was all crazed. No, it did not look very good. So I think we've done the job. So this is going to go through um, a wash cycle. And then I'm going to put it in dry polish. This is actually, uh, we were actually able to repair this and it's actually looking pretty good. Pretty darn happy about that. So in case uh, you're new to the videos and you haven't seen this uh, before, our snowflake obsidian uh, we ran like normal uh, with we started with the 6090 heavy grit uh, coarse grit and then we went to the 120 220 medium uh, silicone oxide grit the 500 pre-polish which is aluminum oxide the 1000 
um, aluminum oxide and then we put it in a wet polish and the wet polish is what damaged the stones they looked terrible they were really crazed they um, I should have kept a piece as a reference it just the whole surface on the stone um, was so marred that that the black in here looked gray I mean, it was, it was really pretty awful. So we decided to take it back instead of just pitching the batch and saying it just didn't work. We wanted to repair it and see if, how that you know, process would work. And what we did is we took it back to the medium, 120, 220. We ran it for a few days in that. Um, I think we ran it for a whole week. And then we ran it a whole week in 500, a whole week in 1,000. Um, and now we are ready to hit polish, but we have to put it in a wash cycle first to make sure we have all the residue from the 1000 super fine polish, pre-polish off of it. And then when it's going to go through two or three wash cycles until the water runs clear, and at that point we're going to dry the stones really well, you know, let them sit out and dry for, I don't know, an hour, make sure they're good and dry, and then we're going to put them in a dry corn cob polish for a few days, and we'll see what kind of a shine we can get on it. And tune in next week <laughs> to uh, see how that dry polish turned out. We're back with our Snowflake Obsidian that has been in dry polish for a week. Oh, oof. Try and get a bigger piece here. Sorry, we're adjust the camera a little. Oh, that, my friends, is a sigh of relief. Remember when we ran this through polish the first time and it was so crazed and it came out looking gray and it was awful? Oh, is it looking perfect now? Beautiful snowflake obsidian. The dry polish did the trick. We had to take it back to like 120 and uh, run it through like the 120, the 500, the 1000, and then back into dry polish to get the surface repaired. And I think it's just lovely. Now, it's not as high gloss as the amethyst, as the wet polish. But wet polish on this snowflake obsidian ruined it. Just ruined it. But now it's looking lovely. Okay, let's take a couple more. Kind of looking for a nice big piece. Thought we had a great big one. No, but this one's full of snow. Look at that, isn't it pretty? Feels so slippery. Very, very happy with this polish. I had one that was kind of barrel shaped. I kind of wanted to pull it out. for this batch. There's too much in here. I'm going to have to dig a lot out first. I 
And this is just rubbing it off. I haven't, you know, rinsed it off. Well, I'm going to dry to begin with, and I'm just rubbing the dry polish off with a dry towel. Well, very pretty. As funny as it may sound, this is going to need a burnish cycle as well, which means it's going back in the water with borax to get rid of all this dry polish that could have caked in. Yeah, this is, has turned into a success. definitely a success. Oh, love the subsidian. Fortunately, we do not have any great big pieces because we had worn it down so much in all the different stages. I'd like to run the snowflake obsidian again uh, now that we kind of know what we're doing so that we don't... Um, lose so much mass. You can still see all the <laughs> all the powder. I'm still wiping it off. So dry polish is corn cob, crushed corn cob, which actually it has a grit listed as 2040 corn cob. And we add aluminum oxide to the barrel and you know just kind of mix it together and then uh, layer the stones in and polish it and this is run for a solid week you know put it on the rotary just no water and uh, see all of that you'd think is damaged but it's just powder I need to get all the powder off Okay, we're going to dig through, get all of our little pieces out, and uh, put them through a, a wash cycle. Okay.